So one of the first things I want to talk about is I want to talk about incremental processing and incremental exchange. Now this is not a known term. This is actually a term that we came up with and we coined because we saw it consistently within sluices. Some people call it, they're, 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 some people have referred to it in the past, but I don't think they've explained it or, or actually put it in such a term, terminology, that you could understand it. And let me explain what happens. Now this is going to refer mainly to, um, mainly to a high banker situation, but it's in every sluice it happens. So I'm going to draw you a sluice. So here we have a sluice. And you, let's say it's a high banker. So you have a header box here. Your sluice comes down. You have water that's coming in here. And then you have dirt that's coming in here. So what's going to happen now is, is this mixes up and it becomes the slurry. The slurry falls directly into here. Well, what you're going to have is you're going to have, obviously, a series of riffles. So let's say you have a riffle here, riffle here riffle here, and a riffle here. And we're going to call these R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. And it goes down. When your slurry comes in, when your slurry comes into your header box here, everything mixes up and it's a very heavy concentration of, of actual sediment that's inside of this. So this is your sediment and also it's known as a sediment rate or feed rate, how fast you're feeding that. So you have material and water coming down slurry and everything is dropping here. Well all of a sudden it starts to move forward. Well what happens? Well you have a vortex right in here obviously. You have a vortex and these all have vortexes. And as the material comes down through here, this riffle will load up with material. So what I'm going to do is, is as the slurry comes down in green, this will actually load up completely. You'll actually see this load up. Now it's going to load up with a couple different things, but it's going to load up with light materials, it's going to load up with heavy materials. At this point they really aren't separated that well. So you're going to have everything in here. It's going to, your riffle is going to look really full, and when you first drop it down, it's going to look really light colored because you have a lot of light sand and quartz. But because you have water flowing over this, you have an energy, you have an exchange pattern going on, what happens? Well, this starts to work down, and as it works down and processes and exchanges, what you're going to notice is that that light, that that light, all that heavy light material starts to exchange out and start to get darker and darker and there's less and less and less. And that's your processing or exchange pattern that's going on. Now if you do this, if you dump, if you keep an eye on it, if you watch it, once you dump this, depending on the water speed or velocity of your water and how quickly your vortex is moving, there'll be different time patterns on this. So if you have a real high velocity and if you have a powerful vortex and fast water moving down it, your exchange pattern is going to be actually kind of quick. And it may be, let's say, one to three seconds somewhere there. If you have a slower one, it may even take somewhere between two and five seconds to really work down that first riffle because it's heavy loaded up. So you drop it down and you sit there and watch it and it'll exchange and exchange and exchange and pretty soon all of a sudden it'll get down to a normal point where you're sitting there with maybe you're just holding heavies behind that riffle. So let's say 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. Three seconds. And that's a pretty fast exchange. So let's say three seconds. If there's three seconds, well, when you dump your, when you dump your material in here, your slurry is coming down and your slurry is traveling really fast. So it's traveling down about that speed. So your water's coming down, your slurry is coming down. Well, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. Think about that. So 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. If this riffle is filled up, what happens? Well, everything, including the gold, the heavies, and lights, are going to come down and pass this riffle once it fills up, and they're going to go down to the next one. And now this one is going to start to fill up. So that's your incremental processing. So once this fills up, now everything else will go to the next one. Once this fills up, it'll go down to the next one. That will fill up. Go down to the next one, this will fill up, and you'll actually see that some of these down here will be still working when this one up here is maybe clearing out a little bit. So it incrementally loads and it incrementally exchanges. If all of these are full, 
let's say they're all full right now. If all of those are full and you still have sediment, you still have a slurry coming down, what happens? Well, what happens is, is everything, there's no space for it here, so it goes right out the end. Okay, so now these are full, you don't have the open exchange pattern in here, so now it can actually ride down, and that's where you're gonna create some losses. So, when you hear about sediment rates and feed rates, and matching it up to your sluice, the exchange rate, or the incremental processing, that's a very important step to understand. So how do, we, how, do we, how do we work on that? Well, number one is, is managing a constant sediment rate is a really good thing. So a slow sediment rate that allows for an exchange to happen. The other way to do this is a length in your sluice. So you can have a longer sluice. So as you feed, if you need more incremental spaces, instead of having five, you may go to 10, you may go to 15, and that's why a lot of people, if you look at it like a long tom, a long tom is the same sort of principle. It's, it has a longer processing. So as it's processing and exchanging, it has a longer path to go down. That's why you'll see a lot of long sluices. Even in our products, you'll see a lot of long sluices because we have very high, very high velocity, fast moving water, and we want to be able to feed that at a high sediment rate. And to do that, we need a lot of those incremental exchange patterns. So when we talk about incremental exchanges, this is what I want you to keep in mind. I want you to understand, and you can watch this for this in your own sluice, but when you dump, you're gonna see this riffle fill up. As it fills up, there's still material going by it. Same thing, this one will fill up, there's material going by it. And if your whole sluice is filled up, guess what? Now you have, actually, I call it kind of a ski bump where everything can ride over this and actually exit your sluice if there's not open exchange areas. So that's why every single piece of equipment is different. I get a lot of people that say, well, what should I use? What size, what water flow, what matting? And it's almost impossible to say, to say really, unless you actually see it. That's why so much, especially when I work with commercial operations, I really wanna see, I wanna see that sluice running and I wanna see the sediment rate. And there's so many factors that are involved in this that you want you, you get it nailed down, you're good. But it really takes a lot more thought than just what riffles am I using and so forth. So that's, that's incremental exchanging, and I hope I explained that well enough. Let me 